in the Middle East and Asia, Africa, and of course, namaste to all the Indians, namaskar, wherever you are, to all your family. It's our second day. And uh, thank you so much, Kala. I, I, this is the first time I'm hearing this. Of course, I still remember our, that lunch was something, you know, it was, it was a learning experience to me as well. But, you know, you guys, are you still all sitting? Oh, you're still clapping. Okay, is this from some, some, from pictures? So I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what you guys are doing because I don't get to see anyone except a few, few groups here. I don't have a full picture because in Dubai, quite recently, they again uh, was very strict in uh, putting people in one room. So I have to stay home and, and, and join you during this beacon in my extra room in the house. So I, I, I'm not seeing uh, so many crowd, but I've been watching all of you, your videos in your different places. I'm very happy to see you're all enjoying the fun, the excitement in VCon, but yet at the same time, I'm also very worried and concerned that a lot of you are not following any COVID protocol. No one is wearing masks. I see some picture. No one is distancing. And I hope you no one would get sick because I don't want to be responsible. We don't want our event be responsible in spreading, you know, the virus is still around. So I hope you be very, very careful because health is very important for me and it should be very important for you because if you're not healthy, then we won't be able to do this business very well. Okay. So anyway, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kala, I was saying that she was nobody, that I was a somebody and I was talking to a nobody, but that's not how I saw Kala before. Although she was saying she was nobody, but I learned from the very beginning. I remember when I first sat down in a training long, long, long years ago when I was still young, <laughs> okay? When I first attended a training, okay? There was, I was actually, well, at that time I was already speaking and there was this lady, she was telling me, oh, Japa, you know, we were talking about prospecting. Yeah, you, you know what prospecting is, right? You make the, that list, you first, you do your 100 list, yeah? So we were doing this prospecting list. So I was telling them, okay, you make your 100 list. So this lady was telling me, oh, Mr. Bismarck, Japa, I, I only have 10 people. I, I, I don't know many people. I only have 10 people, she's saying. I said, really? You only know 10 people? That's impossible. So she has this. So I went to her and I, I took my wallet. Okay, I took my wallet like this. And fortunately, I had $100 there. <laughs> I took $100 and showed it to her. I said, what if... I give you $100 for every names that you could come up with, I said. How many names do you think you could come up with? Oh, I could see her, her face just lit it up. Her face was so happy. She started writing, she started writing so many names. The, the driver, the newspaper guy, the, the, the guy that delivers milk, the grocery guy. She started listing so many names. So I was telling her, so what happened? You were telling me you only had 10 people that you know. How come now you could come up with so many names? And she was smiling and she answered to me, because you said you're going to give me $100 for every name. Yes, I said, if I do that, but I have to take the name and those names should be mine now. And she said, no, 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 Mr. Bismarck, this should be mine. I said, exactly, because previously, the problem you had was that you were thinking those people were of no value. You were thinking that there, there were nobody. Like Kalai was saying, she was a nobody. But I did not see Kalai as a nobody. Although at that time, she was just starting she just started the business 
But what I saw in her, I saw more than a uh, hundred dollar. I saw that she has the potential to be a, a $1 million earning person. So since Kyle was saying that, you know, nobody, nobody, no, you should see everyone. You should see everyone in your network that they have the potential to be a million dollar person in your organization. And this is what you have to see. And this is the first lesson, because if you don't see that, then you'll be passing people around. You'll be passing them by and you'll be thinking, oh, I don't have anybody. But if you actually see someone with value that they are somebody and that they could be somebody one day, and it's just a question of training them, then you won't run out of a list. So people who tell me they don't have a list, basically I said, you have a problem because you don't see the value in all these people that you actually have. So this is the first, uh, this is the first lesson we have. And I'm, I'm sure I, I just want to share this with you. Okay. So we're going to be, uh, I don't know how much time I have, but we're going to sort of like just talk here and I'll be very casual and share, you know, some of the things that made us successful and made so many people successful in this organization. So you have to, this is Thing. You have to see everyone. You have to see the potential in everyone. Okay. So this afternoon, although I actually don't, I don't prepare a list of things to talk about because just like even this thing that I mentioned today is something always, I, I, I don't prepare when I speak to someone one-on-one, -on -one. just like I'm sure you also don't meet someone. Do you meet someone? Do you meet someone in one person and you kind of like you prepared ahead of time what to tell that person? Do you do that? Of course you don't because it's going to be fake, right? So similarly, I'm talking to you right now. I also did not prepare what I'm going to talk about to you because I know you're also one person, one person, one person. There's 300. I heard we have 350,000 networkers watching us today all beautiful people around the world watching us today. So I would want to try to reach you also one-on-one, -on -one, right? So when I'm talking to a crowd, I'm actually talking to you. Don't look at the, don't look at the people as around you, but I'm actually talking to you right now. You, the guy on the shirt, on the blue shirt, all these beautiful ladies on the long sleeve shirt, all of the one wearing masks. I'm talking to each and every one of you. So please try to hear me out, okay? So my main topic I would like to talk about and share today is this, okay? Because our goal is to be successful, okay? Correct? I want you to all be successful. And success means that you learn how to make your list, you make you learn how to you make your calls, you learn how to invite, and all of those things, okay, your upline would teach you. So you need to attend trainings for this, okay? So I cannot give you that particular training. So I'm going to be talking in general. So what is that main thing that stops people from becoming successful? What is that one thing that stops people from becoming successful? distraction you heard of distraction now when you say distraction it's one word it's one word but distraction is a lot so many is this true or not it's only one word but it could be so many what is that your phone is a distraction could be a distraction, right? Netflix could be a distraction, right? Your wife could be a distraction. Your husband could be a distraction. Your children could be distraction. Your mother, your mother-in-law, your father, the weather, so many things could be a distraction. So let me explain what distraction is. So distraction is anything that would take away your focus in doing, in becoming successful. 
It's very simple. So you have the you 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 have the goal. You need to reach the goal, but before you reach the goal, there's so many distractions, right? But are really there's so many distractions? Is it really that that do people the reason they did not become successful? Of course, they would say, "Oh, I did I did not reach my goal. I did not reach my destination because." I was distracted. Who distracted you? Oh, my wife. Oh, my husband. Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, it's the phone. Oh, it's the Netflix. I got so many distractions. Oh, this is not true. That is all lies. These are all reasons you make. You blame others, whereas in fact your real distraction, your real distraction, is your mind. It's not the phone. It's not Facebook. It's not Netflix. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your children. Your real distraction is your mind. So we have to understand. It's very important. This afternoon, I want to convey this to you. That is very important for you to understand what distraction is. Now, is distraction bad? What do you think? Anyone? This is distraction bad? Bad, good or bad? Uh, if it's bad, you do this. Distraction is bad? No, distraction is good, and I'll tell you why it's good. So now you're thinking, wait a minute, what is Mister? What is Mister Japa saying? He's confusing us. He's saying distraction takes us, takes away our success. And he's saying distraction is good. Because what is distraction? Distraction is a painkiller. You know what's a painkiller? It removes pain from you. That is distraction. So when you're studying, yeah, when you're studying very hard, is it painful? Yes. And what happens? Bam, you check the phone. Oh, immediately. That's, is that a distraction? Yes, but it is also a pain reliever. It relieved you of your pain. That's why when you're running, anyone here who tries to run, you try to run, you know, you're so tired. Immediately, your mind would find a distraction. You know, oh, the, there's a message, you stop. Or you see something, you stop. So distractions actually uh, takes the pain away from you. So in a way, it's good. It's a painkiller. But the problem is, if you take painkillers on a regular basis, is that bad? <laughs> yes, because you become addicted. You become addicted. But painkiller once in a while is okay. But it should not be every day that you're just taking painkiller because you become an addict. And that's what happens to us. We become addicted to painkillers that every time we're doing something important like, like exercising is painful. True? Exercising is painful. So that's the reason we allow ourselves to be distracted. Oh, I'll do it next week. Oh, because my wife said this. I have to do this. Oh, because my husband said this. So you use now, you start using so many reasons. You start using so many people, so many reasons. And you tell them, oh, I got distracted because, because you just took a painkiller. That's all. So now, how do you manage your distraction? Because... Having breaks from workout. Do we need to have a break from work? Can you wait? Can you work eight hours every day straight? No break? No, impossible. You, you cannot be doing hard work. It's painful. Can you confront someone? Can you do presentation straight for two, three hours? You cannot do that. You need breaks. Yes. Yes. 
True? Yes. Exactly. So what you need to do is control, manage the distraction. How do you manage the distraction? You know what I do? Using the phone. Because the phone, there's this, what you call it here. There's the clock in the phone. And there's a timer. You see? Yeah? You, you know the phone? <laughs> it has a timer. Right? So yeah. now, what I'm going to do, and I used to do this. Well, I still do it right now, but for a different reason. Okay? So now I'm going to say, okay, I need, what do I need? To, what do we need to do today? Let's say, for example, when you go home or whenever you are, you said, okay, what did my upline tell me? Well, my upline told me to list 100 names. Have you done it? Probably a lot of you none have not because you were distracted. So now you put now. 40 minutes, timer, 40 minutes, bam, timer, and you make the list, 40 minutes. Then after 40 minutes, don't stop. That's your focus. 40 minutes, you're doing your list, bam, 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 bam. You don't stop, you think, you think what name, you think, bam, the alarm clocks, ding, 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 ding. Okay, like this. So it's going to alarm. Okay. Once it's alarmed, bam, you stop. And now you can be distracted. Take some pill for the painkiller. Have a break. Give yourself a break. What do you want to do now? You want to eat? You want to watch CNN? You want to watch something? Okay, fine. How long? Now, it's in the middle of the day. I don't want to be distracted too long. Okay, so now I put 10 minutes. Is that good enough, 10 minutes? I watch CNN for 10 minutes. Anyway, every 10 minutes, the news changes. So I watch for 10 minutes. I'm watching CNN. So it's a break from my thinking of names. It's a break from whatever work I'm doing. Okay? Then the... the, the Timer, the timer, 10 minutes. Starts alarming. Oh, you cannot hear it. Okay, so it, it, the, the clock starts alarming. Okay, 10 minutes is over, turn off the TV. Now, what's, what's the next thing I would have to do? Okay, my upline said, after I have the names, I now have to call them to set up meetings. If now, of course, it's different now. During my time, we, we do this call, you know? Like, now it's different. We just say, oh, I'm going to Zoom them or whatever you, whatever you do. So spend that, uh, spend that hour or 45 minutes, time it again. I'm going to do now Zoom calls for my, for my downlines, for training, for this. So again, you're inside that. And even with that, within that, you finish it within a time, you can take breaks. Guys, it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to be distracted, but not for three to five hours. If you're distracted three to five hours every day, how are you going to be successful? And, and they had a study. I was just reading it. That a normal, well, they say normal, but I say this is abnormal. They say a normal person today okay, spends three to five hours every day on social media, WhatsApp, <laughs> Netflixing, Instagramming, high fiing whatever you're doing. Imagine five hours. Now that's a lot of distraction. And you wonder, oh, how come you're not successful? So this is the first thing we, we would have to learn. And this is called discipline. You need to discipline yourself. And when do you start? At night? No, you start in the morning. You start in the morning. Even your sleeping time. You also need to discipline your sleeping time. 
How many hours do I sleep every day? 12, 16, that's too much, right? They say seven to eight is good. More than that, you know, you cannot wake up anymore. If you lie down in bed more than eight hours, oh my God, like when you wake up, you cannot stand up. Your body gets so lethargic. So I would say eight hours, okay? Is that good or sad? For me, you know, when you're older, six hours is good. They say in the, in the Vedas, they say more than six hours is already mode of ignorance. Yeah, tama. <laughs> they should just be six hours, six to seven. Okay, so you time it. So if you, if you sleep at 10 or if you sleep at 10 o'clock, you should be awake by five. Yes, that's seven hours. So set an alarm and discipline yourself. So don't sleep more than time. If you sleep more than that, then you're also taking away a lot of time to be successful. And why am I talking about this? Guys, because see, you may not be aware of this, but all of us, all of us, has the same time every day. Do you know this? You have 24 hours in the day. I also have 24 hours a day. Bill Gates, who's a billionaire, does he have more time? Oh. <laughs> he also has 24 hours in the day. Even the poor person in the street has 24 hours a day. So now you think, wait a minute, wait a minute. So nature, God is fair because he all gave us the same amount of hours every day. Now, why is it that some people are successful and some are not? Because they know how to use the hours they have in their hands. It's just like, you know, you give everybody a million dollars. You think because you give everybody a million dollars, they're all going to be rich? No. How would they spend the one million dollar determines how they're going to be rich. If they're going to be rich, determines on how they would spend the one million dollars. Is this true, Ibrahim? Yeah. This is true, right? You have a million. Another person has a million. How do you spend it? How does he spend it? determines basically if he's going to be successful, one is going to be successful or not. Is this true? <laughs> Very much. It's how you would spend it. So now let's go back now. We all have 24 hours a day. And this 24 hours a day, can you buy it? No. If you cannot buy it, is it worth a million dollars? Yes, More. In fact, people would spend millions. You know, what's his name? Steve Jobs, he was spending millions just to buy one minute, additional minute. If, he, if you have the money, you pay anything to get extra one minute. True or not? Yes. So your time is so precious. Very precious. Now the question is, how are you how are you spending it? So if we spend it on distractions, okay, if we spend it hours, three to five hours of that nonsensically, then what's happening is that we are wasting our life. That's basically what it's all about. The difference between the successful people and the people that have not been successful is that the people that have not been successful wasted more of their time than the person here. So there's a, there's a need for discipline. And the first thing I would like to teach you, if you really want to start disciplining yourself, please join the, the 5 a.m. in the morning club. Okay, that is the club of the successful people, the 5 a.m. 
In fact, even earlier, 4.30. Why is that? Why is the morning so important? Did you, I'm sure you heard this. In India, it is called the Brahma Murta hour. You heard of it? Yeah, bro. You heard of it? Yes. Good, good. What is the Brahma Murta hour? It's one hour and a half before the sun comes up. And what is this hour? This is the hour where everyone is still asleep. <laughs> everyone is still asleep. And this hour is said to be very, very holy hour, auspicious. In all different religion, they pray during this hour. Why? Because it's very auspicious hour. This is the time when you could sit down, meditate, and your mind during this hour is very peaceful. During this hour, you're not going to be thinking of touching your phone because everyone is still sleeping. No one is messaging you that time of the day. Everyone is sleeping. No ring phones, no newspaper, no TV, no station is on. And it is a time for reflection. It's a time for prayer. It's a time for meditation. It's a time for planning what you're going to be doing with your life. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about this a little bit, this planning. So first, right, please, my advice to you, join the 5 a.m. club. Okay, that's, that's my club, <laughs> okay? I wake up 4.30 in the morning, but I have to sleep early. So if you wanna wake up early, you have to sleep around 10. And that's also good for your health. Now in the morning, we're, we'll, we'll talk about what do we do in the morning. So the morning you could spend first, when you wake up, be grateful, pray, to the God you're worshiping, to the form of God you're worshiping. Pray to Allah, do your tidings, meaning be grateful. Because it says if we don't become grateful, we would never be happy. People, the beginning of success is that we must be first grateful. This is first number one. And how do we be grateful? By thinking, oh, I'm alive today. I'm breathing. Because, you know, millions of people don't wake up, did not wake up this morning. Millions of people died yesterday, did not wake up this morning. Millions of them. But we're one of the few that woke up today. So who should we thank for that? Then we should thank, you know, Allah for it. We should thank Krishna for it. We should thank the Lord for it. Because we're alive today, what does that mean? Okay, how can I be used, right? How can I be an instrument? How could I help others? Then you make your plans, okay? Now, the detail of your plan, it's something that you have to work out. But this is the first thing, okay? So I want you to start making a form of like what a life plan. You know, you heard of a life plan? No, you guys don't have life plan? Oh my God. Okay. What is a life plan? Anyone here married? Can you raise your hands? The, the one married, got married. Okay. So many people got married. Okay. Tell me. How many months did your wife or girlfriend plan the wedding? Six months, two months. Do people, do people have wedding plans? Do people make wedding plans? Yes. People make wedding plans, especially the women. They make wedding, big wedding plans. In India, the wedding plan is so big. It takes weeks, days, party, and so many other cultures. They have a long wedding plan. In Turkey, I heard, oh my God, the wedding hours. Even I attended a wedding of uh, my friend <laughs> JR in Thailand. It was also very long. 
So they make plans, they make preparation. When you buy a car, do you buy it like this? Do you also plan what to buy? What kind of car? Four by four, two door, how big my family? You make plans to buy a car, true? When you buy a house, you don't make plans? Of course you check where to buy, market price, how many rooms, where location, the sun, blah, 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 all of this. You make plans. It takes a few months sometimes to make a plan. So you have plans for cars. You make plans to buy a car. You make plans to buy a house. You make plans to marry someone. But you don't have plan for your life. This is sad. <laughs> is this not sad? And your car is a short-term thing. Your life is a bit, might be long, and you don't have plans for it. You don't find that sad? Okay, so I want you to start planning something. Okay, and of course, this is also depend on you. But the guide, there's a very uh, uh, wonderful guide to plan, uh, to plan your life. It's called the life plan. And what is the guide? Okay, first, first time, first thing is that, okay, you ask, oh no, you ask yourself, what do I want to be remembered? How do I want to be remembered? You want to write that word? How do I want to be remembered by my children? by my family, by my wife, my father, my parents. How do I want to be remembered? Because how do you want to be remembered pretty much de determines the integrity or the standard how you're going to live your life, right? Do you want to be remembered as an addict? <laughs> do you want to be remembered as an alcoholic? Do you want to be remembered as a bad person? No. no. So definitely, we want all the good things that we want to be remembered for, right? We want to be remembered as a, as a uh, good leader, as a caring person, humble person, helping people, very kind to you know, very kind to all, even to animals. I want to be remembered to be also kind to animals. That's why I'm a vegetarian. Okay, I want to be remembered to be kind to animals, not just dogs, but to all animals, especially cows that gave me milk when I was a baby. So the cow is like my mother. Why should I kill the cow who's like my mother? So I want to be known as a kind person. So how do I want to be is something that you write. It's your decision, not mine, right? How do you like to be remembered is part of your life plan. So you write that down. So you write, it's a simple one. You could actually do it tomorrow. When you wake up tomorrow, you do it. Then number two, what is important to me? So what is important to you? Money, health, relationship, cars, wealth, riches. What's the most important thing to you in your life? This you have to list down. Because see, the important things might differ from one person to another. But I could share with you some of the important things that is in my life plan. Okay? Okay just so that you'll have an idea. Is this okay? Yeah. I'm not going to share you my life plan, but I'll get, give you some idea. Like what's the important things to me? Okay. Of course, one, the practice of my spirituality, you know, the prayer of prayer or worship of God is very important for me so that I practice some form of religion, practice yoga or I practice. So that's very important to me. Second, health. 
is very important to me. So I list health. So if health is important to me, then it means I have to exercise. <laughs> I have to eat well. I have to, you know, check. You know what I mean? Water that I drink, food that I eat. All, anything connected to health, right? From breathing good air, drinking clean water, eating uh, good food must be included in that importance. So then that becomes now a part of your life, uh, life plan, which means I have to exercise every day. I have to walk. I have to check, you know, on a regular, because that's important to me, right? What are the next important things? Relationship. Is relationship important to you? Yes. So if it is important to you, then you have to spend time also. You know, oh, I, I taken, <laughs> you know, I've not taken my wife out in a long time. Why? Oh, he's just my wife anyway. He can wait. The husband can wait. The wife can wait. It's important, but it's not urgent. And these are the mistakes that we make. Because the important things in life are not urgent. Do you know that? Yes. Your health is not urgent until you're in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. But do you want to wait for that? No. You want to check your health. You want to take care of your health before the hospital. <laughs> before you get sick. And that's the reason... It's important. It's not urgent, but it's important. Relationship, the same thing. You could always say, oh, I'll see, I'll see my wife. I'll see my husband next week, next month, or my mother. I visit. And this is the funny thing. This is the funny thing. Not funny. In fact, it is sad. So you have, you know, some older parents, right? They hardly see anyone. They get old already. They, they just stay and their children have their life that hardly visit their parents. But when their parents die, boom, everybody stops. They all fly to visit who? The dead body. And what's the value of visiting a dead body? Why were you not visiting when the person was still alive? Should you not visit when they're still alive? Or should you visit when they're dead? What do you think? When they're alive. When they're alive. If, if my friends would not even see me on Zoom while I'm alive, I mean, why, why would I want to visit? Why I don't want to be visited when I'm dead. When my body is there, what's the value? I'm no longer there. So this is how distorted the world is, the world we live in today. That we only make important things when it's already urgent. So somebody died. Oh, it's an urgent thing. Why? He died. Or oh, he's in the hospital. It's urgent. Why? Why does it have to come to that? We should look at it before then. We must do things before, before those things, okay? Then, so this is what's important. What is important to you? You need to list down. Education of your kids, so many other things, health. And number three, the last one. Okay, how do I get there? How do I get to my destination? What is your goal? What is really, what do you want, what, what do you want to have? That must be very clear to you. Just like, you know, when you're buying a house, you must, be, you must know how many bedrooms you want to buy and why, why, you know, like, let's say there's only two of you, right? Would you buy like a 10 bedroom palace if there's only two of you? It doesn't make sense. It's extravagance. Normally when there's two of you, oh, let's just get a, a two to three bedroom house. One is for, you know, visitor and one for the elder parent or whatever. Or be practical, you know. So you, you, anyway, you make a decision already what you would want. You need to know what I want. So same thing. 
Because see, QNET, the business that we have, would not tell you what you want. It's only a vehicle for you to achieve the goals that you set. And you know, those goals might change, will change. Sometimes you reach a certain goal, oh, you've achieved something and the goal might change. Now. Probably when you started uh, QNET, you were still not married and you were in a one bedroom apartment, you achieved it, you're staying in some, the Burj Al Arab or whatever, <laughs> the Khalifa Tower with a one, one bedroom, but now you're married your goal might have to change. Then you had three children, the goal might have to change now. The additional education of the kids and all of those things. So the goal, you have to understand that it keeps on moving. That's why we need, we need to revisit it regularly. You need to revisit those goals, but it's okay. It could move, but the point is, you must know where I'm going. Where am I going this year? If you don't know where you're going, then how would you reach where? You know, just like you ride a car, yeah? Let's say you call, uh, here we have the, in Dubai, we have the Karim. Karim is like the Uber, okay? So we call Karim. So beautiful car comes, okay? And you ride the car, immediately, what does the driver ask where you go? In fact, the driver doesn't ask anymore because on the app, you already have to say where you're going. Because if you don't say where you're going, you won't be able to book. Okay, so can you just call a car and you don't know where you're going? Oh. It doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. <laughs> it also means, can you just join QNET and not know where you're going? So it's like renting a car or getting a car, but you don't know where I'm going to I don't know where I'm going to go. I, I don't know. I don't even have a life plan until I spoke to Mr. Bismarck tonight. I didn't even have a life plan. So it means you don't know where you're going. What the hell? Where are you going? So do this. Please do this tomorrow. Decide where you want to go because there's this amazing vehicle and that was Yesterday, he was speaking about this vehicle that is like a Ferrari, right? You, you have this vehicle, you called upon this vehicle, learn how to drive it. And most important is, please know where you want to go, what you want to achieve. And once that is set, okay, it's not a one-time sitting, then every morning you look at your life plan. You have to look at your life plan every morning. It must be part, even a one minute, two minute, you glance, okay? Why? You remind yourself. And now every day you do some steps. One minute of one step towards that goal is a lot. In one year, it's 36%, 37%. What, what are, we were doing the math in one year. So in, so meaning that 1% that you try to improve in your life every year becomes a 37% improvement within the year. Whatever you want to do, whether it's reading a book and, and recently, in fact, what well, sometime in my training, I started introducing this Japanese system of called Kaizen. Kaizen means to improve, self-improvement. So the Japanese has this system, they say Kaizen. Because for many people, they would say, oh, I'm very busy, I don't have time. But the Japanese, the Kaizen principle said, you don't have time even for one minute? My friend, one minute, can you give me one minute? Not even giving me. I mean, can you not give one minute? What do you think? You're so busy. Let's say, Devaraj, you're the busiest CEO. Can you give one minute? Can anyone give one minute? Yes. 
So one minute of what? You know, books. Do you read books? Oh no, how can I read a book? It's 1,000 pages. You know, the Mahabharata is 1,000 pages. How can I read it? One minute every day. So one minute every day, right? The Mahabharata, 1,000 pages, you finish in 1,000 minutes. How many minutes in a, in a year? I don't know how much, but that's how you finish a book. You read one page or one minute. Probably that's around, if you're a bit fast reader, that's one to two pages, three pages sometimes, one minute. And people say, oh, I cannot exercise. I'm so busy. Really? One minute then. Show me one minute of push-up. Let me see if you're not, you cannot even probably finish one minute of push-up. And that's already a workout. So you could steal one minute. Then later on, before you leave the house, do another one minute. During the day, you could be stealing one minute, one minute, one minute, and you realize you're already doing so many minutes of one particular thing. So meaning you could improve yourself. How do we improve ourselves? Learn a new language, okay? Read books because reading books is so essential because you get to absorb experiences that other people had when you don't, you don't need to go through it. Just like there are many books on network marketing. There are many books on success. You read this uh, Rich Man Poor Dad books of you know, Kiyosaki on, in, on this, on that. So, so many things that would give you a bit of an understanding of the, the entrepreneurship, how to be an entrepreneur. And that would help you character it would help you build yourself in terms of success so read a book make this a make, make this a, a part of your goals that you're going to be reaching because this activities your health i'm telling you this is priority because if you're unhealthy you may have a million dollar it doesn't mean anything you could be successful but you're walking like a 90 year old man in fact, I've seen 90-year-old men walking straight because they're healthy. But what I'm saying, you have this old, sometimes 40-year-old that already had a stroke. That's what you want to be successful. Yeah, tune in. I became successful. I became a millionaire, and I'm only 35 years old. But you already have a heart attack. What's the value of that? So there's so many things that we, we have to be looking on because success is not an easy thing. You know, that's why if you look at a mango tree, and I, I remember when I used to, <clears throat> back in the days, we would be planting. And you know, some people, they have this, what you call, they would graft. You know what grafting is? So they would go to a 15 year old mango tree 15-year-old mango tree. Because normally it takes 10 years for a mango to, to have a fruit. Okay, so what they would do, they're going to go to the a branch of a 15-year-old mango and they would graft it. They're going to put some soil, cover it, or market it so that it would have roots. Then they cut it. So this mango now is already actually 15 years old but it's still small, but it's already 15 years old, okay? So just in like one year, it's gonna to start to flower. But the, the trunk is just this big. Now, how many, how many you think, how many mangoes this trunk can carry? <laughs> huh? How many mangoes do you think they could carry? Sometimes you could not even carry one. It's going to break. So normally in the beginning, until this gets big, it would take seven to eight years. At least it's shorter because the trunk has to grow before the flower would, would, would turn into fruits. Why? Because nature understands that this trunk cannot carry the success. 
it's going to break. Similarly, success must be also, the foundation of success must also the development of our character. The question now we should be asking is that, am I strong enough, developed enough as a big tree to carry the fruit of my success? Because if not, this success, you may be successful, but you'll end up an alcoholic. You'll end up losing everything because success can break and destroy you. Now, you don't want this. We don't call this success. Success for me is being healthy, knowing what to do with your money, helping people, raising others to help mankind, adding to society, adding benefits to society rather than destroying it because you could not control yourself because you're weak as a character. And that's the reason we do this training because our focus, our first focus is to develop you as leaders, that you have this foundation as leaders because success is easy once you already know these principles. It's there. The vehicle is there, right? It's been, uh, uh, it's been used. It's been adopted. It's been applied by so many leaders that you've met. But they did not just become successful, but they've also became better people, better person as a husband, as a father. Of course, we're not perfect. We have many uh, imperfections, but at least we try to be the best we could as a human being, that we add benefit to the world and not create you know, additional suffering in, in the world we live in. And so this is what we'd like to achieve in, in our training. So we're sharing, sharing with you uh, this, this time. So I hope you could, uh, that there was something that I was able to share that you could learn. For me, don't get distracted too much. Once in 10, 10 minutes, control your distraction. 10 minutes at a time, focus more, spend more of your time in trying to reach your goal, right? Join the 500, join the 5 a.m. club, sleep early, wake up early so you could do more in the morning and do your life plan. Your life plan, you could, you might have another 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in this life. We don't know, but it's always good to have a life plan because you have a map. You have some GPS to follow where you want to go, where you want to achieve, then you could become more peaceful and contented. Because, you know, imagine if you're lost. You don't have GPS. You don't have map. You're lost. What's the feeling of someone who's lost? He's nervous. But if you have GPS, you have a map, you're driving, you could whistle, you could sing, you're relaxed. Why? I know where I'm going. So this very feeling of someone who knows where he's going, he's confident, right? He's playing on the radio, he's talking to his girlfriend or his wife, his children. He knows where he's going. Is he not more relaxed and comfortable? Or do you have someone, oh God, he doesn't know, should I ask, What's the, what should I do? I, I don't know where to go, I'm totally lost. So we don't want to be like that. I want you to know where you're going. Learn how to drive this powerful vehicle. And I want you to be contented, confident, and get all the info, information you need. It's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. We're not trying to build a, a rocket here. This is a very simple business. Entrepreneurship is a very simple business. We know how to do it. This is what we do. We teach people how to be successful. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Japa. Thank you. Thank you.